you have done so much work to get your period back. So what if you reintroduce exercise and the whole, it all goes away, it all goes out the window? Or maybe you're trying to get your cycle back right now and you're seeing if you can do it with some exercise incorporated. Wherever you're at, it's pretty hard. Bringing exercise back in after you've had a bunch of time off from it or keeping exercise in once you've decided a huge reduction is necessary to get your period back is really hard work. So today I am actually taking you through a few tips on how to actually bring exercise back in. So normally I talk about things to keep in mind, ways to decide if exercise is right for you, ways to approach reintroducing it. But today I'm talking about actual like day-to-day -day programming, how to get your workouts in without having them impact your cycle. And the way I'm actually talking about that today is with intuitive fitness, this concept of intuitive fitness. And I'm looking forward to having this conversation. I'm actually not an intuitive fitness expert. I don't actually know if that's even a thing. Uh, might be, it's probably gonna become one, but I have been a competitive weightlifter. I have spent a long time in the gym doing CrossFit, being enthused with that. And I do have a PT qualification. It's like over 10 years old, but I did do, I do have that. <laughs> because of all of that background, I have, been able to figure out a lot of my own working out, been able to incorporate a lot of exercise and have a bunch of experience with incorporating exercise in different phases of my life. So today I'm talking about how I've incorporated intuitive fitness after coming from a long history of very regimented programming and you know having a specific training protocol and program that I follow and show up every day, rain or shine and get it done. I've made the switch using those skills to incorporate an intuitive fitness approach. I also have this whole concept with one of my really good friends, Adi Kazu. It's called Too Easy Workouts. And we created this when I was recovering and she was actually pregnant and pre just preparing for pregnancy and postpartum and also really focusing on her business. And so even though we were both from competitive athlete backgrounds, we didn't have time for that anymore. So we had a lot of hangups maybe around how hard we were working out and a lot of desire to not push it that hard and just get movement in because getting movement in feels good to do. So we created too easy, which is like an Australian slang term that we use. It just means like, no worries, not a problem at all. You might go to a restaurant and be like, can I have a coffee? And they'll say, too easy. Or you ask a friend for a favor and they're like, too easy. And it's just, it's not a problem at all. I don't know, it just, it, it just evolved from that. And it's like, if a workout's not too easy, it's too hard. <laughs> so we started like sending pictures or videos of what we were doing that day. And it might be like a super simple workout or maybe that day we did feel a little bit like pushing it. So we call the concept of intuitive fitness too easy for us and we're also making a community for it too so if that's something you're interested in you can go to the hasociety.com forward slash too easy and fill out the interest form if it's not already up we are making like a free group for women who also want to move their body without the pressure of pushing themselves super hard come on in there see what it's like we just post little workouts generally based on the tips I'm about to give you now. So let's dive in. First, we need to set some expectations around intuitive fitness. Trying to use intuitive fitness as a way to actually make strength gains or lose weight, mitigate weight gain because of HA recovery, whatever. That's not really what this is about. It's going to be really hard for you to actually make at performance progress, gains, weight loss, whatever, using intuitive fitness. Because truthfully, you know, the best way for those kinds of goals is to follow a specific program that's designed for you. And right now, during this season, that's not your goal. This season, your goal is to get your cycle back, to recover and feel rested. So if you're hoping that this is how to like work out without pushing yourself and make gains, 
that's not what this is about. This is about how to keep moving your body in a way that's nourishing and good for you mentally and just keeping your joints moving and your muscles lubricated. And, you know, it's important to keep using your body, right? You use it or lose it. So that is the expectation you should have if you want to go into intuitive fitness. It's not heavily goal orientated. It's really just about moving your body and feeling good. It's also about listening to your body. And so the tips today are going to give you ideas and insights and tactics that you can use to better listen to your body and make better decisions around how you work out. Okay. So the first one is about setting maximums. So setting maximums means the amount of days you work out and workouts you do. And we're starting with this because it's important for you to put up boundaries, right? This isn't like, well, I feel like working out every day, you know, right now that's really not necessarily the goal. Maybe you want to move your body every day, but we're talking today about like intentional exercise. And so if you are going to work intentional exercise back in, there needs to be boundaries, especially if you come from a background like I do of working out six to seven days a week, you might be tempted to go back in that direction. So you're going to want to set a boundary of maybe only three days a week, four days a week, even two days a week. And that's your maximum. What that's going to let you do is really check in with yourself. Do I feel like doing this today or not? If you don't have a maximum amount of days that you're, you, you should be working out right now, you're going to be tempted to work out every day. So when you have this unmovable permission to not work out, you're going to have an easier time saying today's not the day. Tomorrow I might feel better or today's definitely the day and I'll enjoy the rest day tomorrow. So take this opportunity to check in with yourself. Do I really feel like working out today? Because I have plenty more days left in the week to get a workout in if I want to. It's really removing that need to like force yourself to do anything that your body actually doesn't want to do. So the second one is making your own programming. Program creation is actually a really tough skill. And people who don't have a background in training programs or personal training or anything like that, this is going to be one of the harder ones. So we're starting with it to get it done and out of the way. And as intuitive and fitness implies, you are listening to your body and using your intuition based on, you know, other factors, like we're going to get to these, but what else you've done that week, how you're feeling. You're using your intuition in those things to decide how you're going to work out today. So saying a program isn't exactly correct. You're not writing a program because you're deciding each day what you're going to do today. Whereas a program is like more of a set in stone plan that you follow and you usually follow it for a week, a month to six weeks eight weeks. So using the prog- the word program loosely, you're writing your own workouts each and every day. During your recovery, I did this for a long time. I ended up having to leave my weightlifting team, not work on a, f- a program anymore. And I had to start putting my own workouts together. So I say, write your own program because you are the one making all the decisions around how you're working out today. And you're not taking suggestion or recommendation from another program or a coach. This is hard to do if you have never done it before. And so I'm going to give you heaps of tips if this doesn't apply to you. But if it does, things to keep in mind are asking yourself, how is my energy today? Before you decide on the intensity that your training is going to be at. What did I do yesterday to make sure that if you did something that was upper body, a bit more upper body focused yesterday or the day before, you're going to switch it and make it lower body focused today so that you're giving each area of your body and your nervous system enough time to completely recover. Because that's a big thing that a lot of us do. We overtrain to the extent that we never actually recover. We just like smash our bodies through the exact same thing over and over again. So you need to be giving yourself some grace here and allowing your body two to three days to recover from what it last did. So if you're writing your own program, you're keeping in mind what's the polar opposite of what I did today. So if you ran or did a hike or something yesterday or the day before, and you want to work out again today, 
maybe a slower based like strength training day is going to be better because it's a completely different stimulus for your body and it's not going to stress you out in one particular stimulus of your body if that makes sense know what you need to do to feel good today so if you're checking in with your body and you're feeling like your hips are achy something that's going to open those up is a really great place to start or if something's hurting something that's going to avoid that joint or muscle or whatever is that's hurting altogether that's going to be the best decision for you today and just checking in with how you're feeling do you want to work out at all and we're going to keep talking about this later but what do you actually want to do today and having things in place about deciding your maximum amount of workouts is going to help and having a few tools in your toolbox about how to ask yourself these questions is also going to help so we're going to get to that but understanding you know what do i even need to feel good today is it a workout or is it rest is it running or is it something more gentle on my joints is it swimming is it a walk is it actually like doing things around my house to keep moving what do you need to feel physically and mentally good asking yourself what have i been avoiding is really important especially if you're writing your own programs or your own workouts from the start we have a tendency to gravitate towards the exercises types and movement types that we are good at or most comfortable with so if you're a runner you're gonna love working running in if you're a weightlifter you're gonna prefer to avoid running and do a lot more lifting if you hate like slow movements and isometric movements like bodybuilding and counting to 10 on a de- on a decline of a squat or a bicep curl or something like most of us hate you know you need to be aware that you have that bias and that you don't want to do that and you need to be diligently working those things in here's the thing what you suck at the most you need to do the most work at so for me i hate things like turkish get-ups and bicep curls and like isometric holds you know slow tempo squats things like that so i know i uh, err on the side of not working them into my program so i need to sit down with my journal these questions that i'm telling you i ask them to myself and i use them to create a program for myself so you'll see me in the garage working things in like turkish get-ups pull-up holds things uh when i'm not pregnant <laughs> And while I am pregnant right now, there's a bunch of stuff that I extra, extra can't do. That's okay though. It's been a fun challenge. So that was the second tip. The third one is following a program and making tweaks. And this is going to be better for the vast majority of people. Before I was pregnant, I loved making my own programs. And I also have been like so busy with the podcast and the AJ Society and clients that the time and energy I want to spend on writing my own programs now is just not there. So I have taken to using a program. I actually use one called street parking. I really like it because they're short and sweet workouts. They're not complicated, but I will say they can be really challenging. And I like that they have something called mama modifications, which is for pregnant and postpartum women. But it also is great for women who are trying to recover. Yeah, trying to recover from HA because it just slows you down and takes out a lot of the really intense movements. But it's pretty easy to tweak a program. Some ways that you can do it, grab a program, look at it. It says six rounds of something. Well, I'm not doing six rounds, then I'll do five, four, or three. Or it has multiple sets, and I'm gonna half those sets. Or it has you know, a certain weight recommended, and I'm going to half that weight, or do completely no weight at all. So barbell squats might just become air squats, or might become barbell only squats, or weighted pull-ups are gonna become just pull-ups, 10 push-ups are gonna become five push-ups. You can easily take a program and scale it right down. So you can remove the weight, you can remove sets and reps, and those things are gonna help you on your way. So it's important to keep in mind if you have a bias of doing the workout 100% as it's written, that's your challenge is to tweak it to something that's going to work better for you right now during this time. And you know, removing the intensity is a really important one. 
is actually going to get its own point. So let's move on to point number four, removing intensity from a workout, whether you're writing your own, whether you're following a program, you need to be totally assessing the intensity that you're working out. And this is a huge one. It's really hard for a lot of people and it's going to make the biggest impact. Whether you're a runner, crossfitter, weightlifter, gymnast, you have a tendency to push the intensity. That's what feels good. It makes you feel super productive. It makes you feel like you're doing it right. So when you go and do a workout and you remove a bunch of the intensity from it, you know, it's not going to feel the same. You're not going to feel as accomplished or get this high from it that you are used to getting. That's a challenge for you and you should be challenged during this time. So how does one remove the intensity from a workout? One important caveat is that you just should be removing the intensity. So when checking in and being like, do I want to push it or do I not? If you're still in recovery or if you're just working exercise back in post recovery, the answer is you need to be reducing intensity. Later on, when your cycles are back to normal, you are doing a really great job at tracking your cycles and you understand if you're ovulating and that your luteal phase is long enough, all that good stuff, push the intensity back up. I'm all for it. Right now, it's actually not gonna help you. So when in doubt, remove the intensity altogether. This looks like everything I said before. Reducing sets and reps, reducing weight on the bar, but also not worrying about your time. Okay, so if you're a runner, I don't care about your time. I don't care about tracking your runs and where you're at. It needs to be a lot more blase about it. So if you're doing a circuit workout like I'm in doing at the moment, there's no need to put the clock on. So the one I do, it does say like six rounds and you should aim for getting it done in 12 minutes. That part, totally ignore. The get it done in 12 minutes part or the beat your last time part, that's where intensity comes in. So you need to be completely ignoring that. You're going in, you're doing the rounds, you're going through the motions. Maybe you're checking your phone. Maybe you just thought of something and you need to write it down. I'm doing that all the time in between sets and rounds. You need to take the time you need to take to get your breath back, to slow your heart rate, okay? Right now, you're just going through the motions. Some strategies for ensuring that you're not pushing the intensity, because there's some people listening who are gonna be like, I don't know if I can do that. Like when I work out, I push. So a couple things you can put in place is the talk test, where maybe you put on a song and you sing the whole time, or if you're with someone, you have a conversation the whole time. If you can continue singing the song or having the conversation, you're probably taking it at a nice steady pace or the nose breathing test. This one's kind of hard, but it's great, right? Can you do a whole workout just breathing through your nose? I have a client, Heidi, she's a CrossFit coach and she did the CrossFit Open really recently at the time of recording this. And she wanted to participate because she actually works at a CrossFit gym. So to participate, she did the workout, but she did it only breathing through her nose. So she understood her time was gonna be way slower. She was probably only gonna do like half or less than half of the workout, but at least she was participating. That felt good. And she was only breathing through her nose, which made it impossible to push past a certain level of intensity. Okay, number five, short and sweet. A walk is a workout. So if you wanna move your body today, but you're feeling tired and that sucks, you're in that limbo that we sometimes feel where it's like, I'm tired, but I do wanna do something, go for a walk, 100% counts, feel great about it. And the next one on a similar vein is other activities that you don't have to be doing specifically like an exercise or a workout to be doing exercise. Channel the blue zone, like the people that live in the blue zones, the ones that live the longest, the healthiest lives with the least uh, you know, reported incidence of cancer and sickness, they live in the blue zone and they live their life in a certain way. They have community, they're social, and they do things like they walk daily, they garden, they look after their house, they drink a glass of wine. So if you channel that concept, why don't you get into gardening? Why don't you do a DIY project? Like you've been meaning to freshen up the paint on the skirting in your room. So just do it. A lot of us procrastinate other things that are important in our life 
because we need to get the workout in. So how can you do a switcheroo there? So for me, yesterday I like assembled these rocking chairs. It was kind of tough. I had to like hold this thing awkwardly and like screw some stuff and no one was helping me. So it was kind of challenging. And then it was a really tough chair to screw in. Like there were, anyway, I know this sounds so stupid, but then I also needed to like walk the dog twice that day because she was getting antsy and I needed to bring a bunch of stuff from downstairs to upstairs. So all of that accumulated, that felt like a pretty active day. I was down to say like, I was active today. I did well. And be careful not to have that kind of thing become obsessive for you. Some people uh, stop exercise and so they do like compulsive movement throughout the day. That's not what this is about. Use your intuition to check in with that. But there really is nothing wrong or shameful with acknowledging that working your body can look a a bunch of different ways. And don't forget about sex. You could just have sex. That'll be fun. Okay, the grip test. The grip test, there is a a specific like tool and formula to actually do a grip test and different coaches and professionals use it for different reasons. But in this concept, you can use the grip test just to give yourself an objective measurement of your readiness to train. So all you do is grab something like a squishy ball or something that's like tough to squeeze. I have a barbell clip, springy barbell clip. Um, and you set yourself a baseline. So on a day where you're feeling fresh and fed and ready to go before you've done any kind of working out, you'll squeeze it every like two seconds and with the same intensity. And as soon as you start to feel your grip strength weaken and you can't quite squeeze it as hard, you stop. And that's your baseline. So maybe you get to like 12, that's your baseline. Now you know you can go into the gym and you can do the grip test. And if you crush it and you do all 12 and it feels great, then you're ready to go. If you do like six or eight or even 10 and your grip starts to weaken, this is an indicator that your readiness to train is not quite there. It's a little low. So you can just use that as a, as a really cool tool. And just remember that if you're doing it for the first time in a few weeks, your grip strength might actually just get a little stronger and you might need to redo your baseline. <laughs> okay. One of my favorite ones here, and I use this with clients all the time and they come back the next week and they're like, that was really helpful in the book, Pussy, a reclamation. So I didn't invent this. It's from a book. She talks about listening to your vagina and asking it questions and checking in with it. Like, what does it want to do? And when you do this, when you check in with your vagina and you're like, or your whole vulva, okay. What do you want to do today? It's going to like, it doesn't lie. Okay. So if you're feeling kind of tired, but you're erring on the side of pushing yourself to do something that maybe isn't optimal for you right now, check in with that. And what do you want to do today? And if it's tired, your vagina is going to tell you it's tired. If it's ready to go, it's going to tell you if it's like, you know what? Like, let's get some masculine energy up in here. I'm feeling good. And it's going to tell you like, let's go do a workout. Your as an HAR, you have a tendency to be, to be more on the masculine side of things, achievement, growth, drive, productivity, let's go. And your feminine side is kind of missing a little bit of the picture here. So when's the last time you asked your vagina what it wants is basically my point. So you're feeling yourself being a little biased towards the masculine really check in and what does your vagina want? And sometimes it's going to say, let's do this. It's going to say, I am feeling great. Let's push. Cause that camp, that is a feminine thing to do. It's just not all the time. So asking your, your vagina, I was going to say pussy, but anyways, asking your vagina, what do you want to do today? Checking in with it. It's not going to lie to you to so give it a, give it a shot. I would actually love to know, like, what did your vagina say it wanted to do today? So if you tag me on Instagram or something, because I love seeing that. And I just want to see a bunch of people like cooking or having a bath or taking a walk. Like, this is just what my vagina said it wanted to do today. It's funny how effective it can be to just check in 
with your genitals to help you make decisions. <laughs> and the last one here is brutal honesty. You need brutal honesty in order to achieve intuitive fitness. And that's a big fear a lot of people have. And they're like, well, what if I try this and I still push it too hard because I know that I have these biases? Yeah, yeah, you do. Brutal honesty needs to be like your motto, okay? So each day when you're journaling or checking in with whoever it is that you check in with, ask yourself, am I being really honest here with what I wanna to do today? This is the hardest part. But using the tools that we outlined just now, it should help you make a, an overall decision, which is why I've left it till last, okay? So if you go through all of those things, all of those questions, you should be able to be brutally honest with yourself in the end. So what do I feel like doing today? What have I done recently? Am I at my maximums for the amount of workouts I should be doing? Have I been you know, consistently reducing the intensity or the strain I'm putting myself through? What does my vagina feel like doing today? What does the group test say that I'm capable of doing today? And all of this information is gonna help you make the best possible decision for your workouts. Give it a shot trust in it intuitive fitness can be a thing and it can be a temporary thing and something that you lean on during times when having hardcore workouts just not working for you it doesn't have to be all or nothing continuing to move and nourish and keep your body going is really important knowing how to not push it is just as important so i hope that this was helpful please subscribe to the channel or the show and i'll see you guys next week and if you have any recommendations for what you want to talk about please send me a comment dm me on instagram i love getting these these suggestions and ideas it helps me out a whole bunch have a good day